back to this evening. Kirk Douglas and Burt Lancaster are the tough guys. Yes, they're starring in our film. That starts at 9 o'clock. But right now, it's time to join World in Action. Don't you step inside this bus! Don't you even step inside this bus! Dorset police block a main road to keep New Age travellers out of a seaside resort. This is my home, and I'm going to protect it! It's just one of hundreds of confrontations that'll take place this summer as a growing band of nomads takes to Britain's roads. The Glastonbury Festival, once a celebration of hippie culture, is now one of Britain's largest commercial music events. Over 75,000 people have paid £49 each for a weekend ticket. This year, one controversial group of visitors has been excluded. New Age travellers used to be given a free site here, but their increasing numbers and friction with festival organisers mean they're no longer welcome. Travellers have got to do their own thing, follow their own free spirit and let them do their own show and not get off, uh, and get off my back. Here we go, here we go. New Age travellers claim they are peaceful, free spirits wrongly condemned by a hostile society. World in Action has followed one group as it journeys across southern England. Unwanted at Glastonbury, the travellers hold a freak festival of their own near Smeetharp, a small village in Devon. They're joined by thousands of ravers out from the towns for a weekend of non-stop dancing to loud electronic music. It's, just, it's so great to be able to get together and actually get on. We don't need all the police to keep us in order, you know, we're quite self-regulating. You know, we're all getting on fine and there's a lot of different sort of people here. And we're all having a good party and we're causing no harm. They've been taking firewood from wherever they can find it. They've been soiling it with going to the toilet all over the place, um, in hedges, just in the middle of the field in very many cases. I know a neighbour's lost a couple of wooden gates that have just been unhung and presumably burnt. And obviously there is the sound aspect from three days or three nights rather of continuous loud music, which has caused distress I know to people in the village and certainly a nuisance to everybody within a mile around. The police have kept a high profile surrounding the site and setting up checkpoints. There have been 25 arrests mainly for drug offences. Direct confrontation with the crowd has been avoided. Tuesday morning and police reinforcements have arrived. There's been about 20 riot vans, a coach load of police, the helicopter, and uh, lots of snow plows and road rammers and various other hippie removing items <laughs> driving round all morning. Critics of the way you live will say that you're being unfair in your child, putting her in this sort of position. What do you say to them? Well, we're not the ones putting her in that position. I'd say it was more the police who were putting her in that position. All we want to do is live our lives the way that we feel is right for us and for her and um, they're trying to stop us all the time. We may have some sympathy for their plea, but we cannot ignore the plea of the people who find their lives being intruded by them moving to what they consider to be a secluded uh, piece of land, but it actually belongs to someone, and they actually own it, and they actually say, I don't want those people on my land, and I've been to court and I've got an injunction, will you remove them? Uh, and I think they have every right to do that, and I think it's your right and my right. If it was in our back garden, we would feel the same way. The travellers say they'll leave soon, but the police are not impressed. Notices are handed out to the thousand or so remaining travellers, ordering them to leave immediately. The police can remove the trespassers under Section 39 of the Public Order Act. Okay, they have to give us a reasonable amount of time, don't they? Well, they've already given us prior warning yesterday, didn't they? No, I mean... With the helicopter and all that... Some festival goers are clearing up the weekend's litter, but local farmers will still be faced with removing piles of rubbish and repairing fences. 
The travellers are packing up their belongings and preparing to take their homes back on the road. Where are you planning on going? Well, safe. On safe. Safe coast, if we can. The safe coast, yeah, for a nice... nice but they're not break. letting us go down through Devon. They're not letting us go further into the county. Why not? Um, heading us all back in Devon and Somerset. Why are they going to do that? Probably because it was the Avon and Somerset that sent us here, like, <laughs> here like, and didn't give that uh, much warning. Cross the border is somebody else's problem. In typical British summer weather, the travellers move off, avoiding a showdown with the police. Only a handful of broken down vehicles remain. We follow one small convoy heading towards Weymouth. The travellers want to take their children to the seaside. Can't see anybody behind me in a minute. Like many travellers, Slim doesn't use a surname. He keeps in touch by CB radio. At the front of the convoy is 25-year-old Mark. Why are you a traveller? Why? Um, so like my freedom. Um, so like being all right to the elements. Uh, don't like being sort of stuck in towns where you seem to have unnatural atmospheres and. What are the hassle you get from the police and local communities? Well. It, it's a bit stressful, but, you know, you get hassles in whatever you do in life, don't you? you know? Why do you think people are so scared of you? I think a lot of it is they're frightened of the unknown. Um, I don't know. Have any I don't hurt nobody. scared of you? I don't personally think so. I don't hurt anybody. Um, I keep myself to myself as much as I can. Um, so you look a fairly intimidating figure. Not purposely. <laughs> I did start off clean today. <laughs> a lot of it is what they read in the papers. They're, I mean, as far as the papers are concerned, we're like we're all drug addicts, um, criminals. Um, are you are you all drug addicts and criminals then? I'm a family man personally. Doing what I what I do. Minutes later, Slim's attempt to do what he wants is abruptly stopped by Devon and Cornwall police. They want the convoy to turn round, leave Devon, and head back into Somerset. An assistant chief constable arrives to handle the operation personally. We get the wrecker from the site, yep. and we turn them round, back vehicle first. Yep. All right. Right. If anyone right. resists us, arrest them for obstruction. Would you know, like to explain the whole situation okay, to me? Why right. we right. cannot Thank you, excuse go me, I've, I'm, this I'm, way, please? No, will you just Otherwise, I cannot, I cannot listen, conform to anything you, you tell me, unless you tell listen, me listen. exactly why we cannot go in that direction to where we want listen, to go. You, we've formed a route for your safety and everybody's safety and everyone else has complied with it. No, so, no. Look, I'm not going to prepare to argue. I've got things to do operations. You have got a choice. You either turn around or be right? turned around. What was Excuse me, I've got things to do. The race no, to the right. No, 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 no. Right? We just want to live our lives. We just want to live our lives. That's all. We pay road tax. Why can't we use the highway? Just calm down. As you see, we've, we've we have a classic situation the here. Oh, oh, you have one way over. No, I'm not going to warn you again. You either move or you will be arrested and you'll be seen. The police are determined to have their way. To ensure the travellers numbering 20 men, women and children leave Devon, they deploy a helicopter, a prison van, dogs and dozens of officers, many dressed in riot gear. The operation disrupts traffic for miles around. They've caused total chaos. We'd have been, we'd have been halfway out, out of bloody... Oh, I can't believe it. I just can't believe it that they could cause this much fuss. For us, all we want to do is get out the other side of Devon. Why didn't they tell us this morning that there were certain ways they didn't want us to go? They told us this morning that we could come this way. This morning, they told us that there would be a police car on this junction that would make us turn left. They would try to make us turn left, but would allow us to turn right if we wanted to. Now they're saying we can. One minute we can, the next minute we can. The police claim they've turned back the travellers because Devon's hilly roads would be unsuitable for such elderly vehicles. The travellers feel they're simply being pushed into the next police force area, something that's happened to them many times before. 
After almost an hour of argument, the convoy is forced into Somerset. There was a little foot stamping exercise by some of the more hardcore to see whether or not we were firm in our resolve to make sure they went in the safest route. As you can see, we are firm in our resolve. For everybody's sake, we knew what was the right thing to do and we've done it. Do you think you've impinged their civil liberties at all? No, I think they impinge their own civil liberties. We live in a democracy where we all have to abide by some rules. And all the while we do that, you and I have to do it. They don't like doing it. The reason they live as they do is because they don't like authority. Every now and again, they rub up against authority. But for the sake of democracy, that authority has got to have its way, I'm afraid. It's just a fact of life. It's my experience that uh, roadblocks are used in circumstances where the police wouldn't be justified. And if people took... Uh, proceedings, they would succeed in showing that the, court, the uh, police were wrong and they would get compensation. Often, as I, often these people are not um, likely to want to sue them in the courts. The courts are not, an, not a place that these people would want to go. I think if they, if they did want to go there, perhaps we would have seen a different kind of policing because the police would have been told not to do what they're currently doing. Many travellers take great pride in their vehicles. Slim has lovingly converted an old coach into a family home. Critics say the travellers exploit the benefit system by not being genuinely available for work. What do you do for money? Um, well, at present, I'm claiming income support. Um, I've only recently give out work. I've been working full time for the last four years. Um, but because I was public ordered from a site I was living on, I had to move out the area. I had to give it up. I had no choice. A leading critic of the travellers is Conservative MP Paul Marland. Last year, he clashed with the group who camped on his farm. He believes travellers should be able to receive benefit only in their hometowns. But they're living in the countryside at our expense. I think that if we made arrangements that people could get the social security in the town in which they were registered, that it would prevent an awful lot of this travelling, and that's the way to try and stop the problem, I think. I know that there's a move to have a look at the legislation covering caravan sites and gypsy sites and that kind of thing, but it's a long way down the line. Something could be done about this now, because they're travelling at our expense. And that's really one that, that really does upset a large number of of ordinary tax-paying citizens. I think, personally, everybody has a right to be able to live where you want, when you want, that freedom. Um, sounds like he doesn't want us to have that freedom. The police say the travellers are associated with another problem, drugs. They claim that illegal substances such as cannabis, ecstasy and LSD are available at free festivals and that many travellers use or sell them. Paul Marlin says his experience confirms this. What, what did you make of them when you saw them yourself? Well, I, I, a lot of them were drugged or suffering from the after effects of drugs, the ones that I saw myself. They were unpleasant, they were rude, and as I say, they were absolutely filthy dirty. They disrupted the water supplies and they left a mess behind when they went away. You can go to any, any large city and you'll find, in, in my mind, a bigger drug problem than what you would on the road. Six hours after leaving the festival, the convoy is finally nearing Weymouth. Suddenly, the travellers spot something familiar. The road has been blocked by Dorset police, who want to stop them entering the resort. What we're going to do, no do I'm going to give you all the help you need to get your vehicle back. Right, and okay, go well, on the, the, first, the first bit of help that I need is some diesel before I can go anywhere at all, over here to Weymouth. Up here, all right. I'm sure it'll go the rest of the way, all right. The rest of the way where? All right. The rest of the way where, officer? Wherever you're going. I'm going right. to Weymouth. Right. Just move your vehicle back because you're not going to Weymouth. I can't. I, can't. Right? I don't have enough diesel to move this bus any further into Weymouth. I don't believe you. I think you're telling us. Well, this. I'm sorry. Would you like to dip the tank? No, I'm Would you like me to dip the tank? I'll get someone else to drive your bus. If you can't drive it, I'll get someone else to do it for you. All right? It's quite simple. The police are using controversial tactics first employed during the miners' strike. You treat us like bloody shit, don't you? Do you get enough. a kick out of this, do you? Not, not do you get all. a kick out of the way that you treat me and my bloody this children? Not, this is not gonna help You're you sick! At all. You're bloody sick! Watch your bus up and move it on back, please. I bet as soon as 
used to have it in the Grand Corner, you let the rest of us through. You know, you can't do this forever. You can't just end this forever from site to site. Public right. order, you can't go this way. Roads closed, there's been an accident. Go that way, go out of the bloody county, go east. You can't do it forever. Throws the idea of a free country out the window, doesn't it? Yeah, that's pretty good idea of a free country. Right. Well, my grandfather died for me. Right, for the last time, are you going to move this vehicle or are we going to move it? Well, I, I... No, I don't want any discussions or debates. The subject's closed, for as long as soon. The vehicle is going out that road. Now, are you going to drive it out that road or are we going to drive it out that road? Right, there's a man there with a crowbar who's going to open your door if you don't unlock it. You're just drive on through. To the police, they are moving a coach. To Mark, they are forcibly entering his home. My child's in here! You stay away from my children! Don't you step inside this bus! Don't you even step inside this bus! My child's here! She's asleep. Don't you even think about stepping inside this bus. Well, this is my home, and I'm going to protect it. Move your bus back. No. Quite easy. Move it no, up. I will not move my bus back. Not at all. As as no, it isn't as easy as that. If you've got a child in there, the last thing you want... We've got a child, proper... officer, we've got a baby, right. we've got three cats, we've got need... two dogs, we've got to go. This is our home, we live here. And what you are doing is... Yeah, yeah, look at all this! Look at all this! Look at Look at this! A sizeable traffic jam has built up by the time Tempest calm and a compromise is reached. Uh, we move you up to Osmington Drove then, which is basically about two miles up the road here, on the right hand side. It's a large track. We left alone till after the weekend. Right. We put you up there for tonight initially. We'll take it from there. Is that acceptable? Seems fair to me. The travellers have been on the road for nine hours, but their problems aren't over yet. A group of local farmers have blocked the entrance to the site suggested by the police. Why put the tractors across the bridleway? Because we, we don't want the travellers on our land. Why not? Because they, they've been here before and we've had trouble when they've been here before. They leave rubbish, um, they nick fence piles for light fires. Um, there's gaps in fences where the, the vehicle's gone through fences. Do you want to cooperate with the police? Oh, yes. But they advised the travellers to park up there as, as, as an interim solution. You couldn't help out at all. Mm, well, half an hour ago, the police <coughs> asked us to block the entrance off, and then a quarter of an hour ago, they asked us to let them in. In your own mind, you prefer to keep them out? That would seem to be prudent under the circumstances. The convoy was unable to move onto the land without the farmer's permission. Eventually, the police find another site a few miles away. It's 10 p.m. by the time the travellers arrive at their resting place for the night. It's a lay-by just off a busy main road. Well, it's nice here, isn't it? Yeah. Perfect site, really. <laughs> I just go this is the sort of place I've always dreamed about. Don't dig a fire. It's taken them 11 hours to travel just 64 miles. And is it really a, a good use of manpower and resources tonight to do all this? I can think of a lot better things that I could do with those men, but unfortunately it's a job which has got to be done, and that's what we've done. To prevent overnight parking in Weymouth? No, it would be far more serious problems than just overnight parking in Weymouth. That would just be the start of it. Like what? Wherever these people went in Weymouth tonight, they would have been parked illegally. There's nothing legal they could do if they got involved with all the holiday traffic in the town earlier on this, this evening when this all first started. It would have caused chaos in the town. You've seen the size of the vehicles. They were intending to go to Portland. There are only about four roads on Portland that are suitable for this sort of convoy to go around. And once they got off those roads, it would have been all sorts of problems. But you're satisfied that it was a good use of your resources? It's a necessary use, and I certainly wouldn't call it a good use, but it's something which had to be done, and it's been done. Wednesday morning, and the travellers wake up hoping for a better day. The Dorset authorities keep up their pressure on their unwelcome visitors. 
The police return escorting Dorset County Council's gypsy liaison officer, Basil Burton. He's already drawn up an eviction notice for the travellers. And under the bylaws, I'll leave you a copy of it, that it is an offence to park on a picnic area to sleep or to cook on a picnic area. Now, I'm, <laughs> steady, I'm giving you until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning to vacate. If you don't vacate, then the necessary action will be taken. In the next week, the travellers are moved on a further four times. Eventually, they leave Dorset for Wiltshire. The travellers say their biggest problem is constant hounding by the authorities, but they say that caring for their children is straightforward. Is travelling difficult with children? Uh, it, it's, not, it's not really difficult, it's different. I wouldn't actually say it's difficult as such. Uh, she, she's a happy, healthy child and has just a very well travelling life. I mean, she, she's not cooped up in a flat all day where I can't let her out to play because it's too dangerous. There are um, some very strange people about her and I can't keep an eye on her. Whereas on the road, everybody looks out for everybody else's children. So I mean, they've they're always got an eye kept on them, so much safer. What about education? There are schools for travellers, there are travelling schools. And, um, school buses, play buses for the little ones, things like that. And whenever possible, if you're stationary long enough, they go to the local schools. Scotty dog, Scotty dog. <laughs> go up the hill, before you get to Bradford on Avon, there's a left turn for Duncan Farley. The travellers spend several days looking for a more acceptable place to stay. Eventually, the convoy heads for a remote spot at the end of a farmer's track. They've stayed here before, and they hope they'll now have a few days' peace and quiet. Surely they're getting a message that the ordinary law-abiding citizens don't actually want them. They're travelling at our expense. They're, they're trespassing whenever they stop, and they go into people's woods without permission. They never ask permission to stop anywhere. They just pull in. They think it's their... Because they're a free spirit, they think that's their own right. They let the dogs off the lead. The dogs tear into the woods. They go and make a frightful mess in the woods themselves. They cut down trees. I mean, that's hardly a free spirit. If you're a free spirit, it's OK to be a free spirit as long as you do so at your own expense. But if you're doing it at the taxpayer's expense, it's slightly galling for the other taxpayers who are actually footing the bill for your freedom. I don't want to see this society being authoritarian and uh, being so... Uh, unable to cope with uh, a multitude of different cultures and a multitude of different kinds of people that we have to say to certain groups of people they can't, in, they can't enjoy themselves in the way they want to enjoy themselves. That doesn't seem to be the right way forward. And I'm afraid to say that we haven't got that uh, tolerance sometimes and we need to develop that. The last few stragglers arrive at the new site, a derelict quarry they can now carry out much needed repairs to their vehicles. They also have time to reflect on what they see as the constant police harassment of the past few days. The perception of the uh, New Age travel of being harassed in that way pales into insignificance to the complaints that are received by the resident chief constables of people who have had incursions onto their land, onto their homes, onto their peace and quiet. And believe me, it pales into insignificance compared with that. Is it worthwhile, all the hassle? Um, yes, it is, yes. It, it doesn't put me off. It's, um, it's a shame because it's so needless. Because if, if, if we were left alone, then the hassle that we create on our own is so small compared to the hassle that's created when we're um, interfered with illegally by the police time and time again. But, um, yeah, I, it, it, not once have I, have I thought about going back to living in a house. It would take a lot more than that to do that. I, I love this lifestyle and it's good for the children and it's the best thing for, for us at the moment still, definitely. Thank mm -hmm. you.